a candid camera right now. We're actually going to Orlando. Uh oh. Oh, is that right? I should have brought a speedo. <laughs> or a speedo. That's hey, great. Bill. Hey, Jack. Hey, that's good. Hey, that's good. Anyway, uh, this is a great, uh, great flight. Great honor to do this. Uh, it's nice not only to have you here and take you to DC, but it's nice to know that you guys are going to be okay without Wi-Fi and TikTok for a couple minutes, unlike the re regular flying public. So, for the Marines out there, Semper Fi, happy birthday this uh, week. Semper Fi. Uh, I thought I said all Marines are going to be in the front. I don't know what happened here. I'm sure the Air Force outsmarted us again, so they're probably up here as well. I was a 22-year-old captain, and I was, I was the S3 for the largest battalion in the Army, and my PTSD was you know, determining which mission, which convoy our guys would go on, and when they got hit, I felt really responsible. But my treatment was, I was seven weeks in hospital in Denver in 2018, and my therapist said, so how many, what percentage of the time do you guys get ambushed? So probably 15%. So that means 85% of the time you were successful. I went over in October 67. I got wounded in June 68. The first firefight I was in, I was assistant gunner to Henry Paseas. He's shooting the M60 machine gun. I'm feeding ammo into it. Next thing you know, he's dead. I'm by myself. We'll call Mr. Anthony Marengo. All right, Anthony, I told you it was coming. Mail call, sir. Have it upside down, sorry. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. My grandkids. I'm going to take a picture soon. From, uh, my golf buddies. That's great. Very awesome. Very awesome. Wow, that's wonderful. I got a whole bunch of mail. Oh, wow, that's nice. They wrote you a whole letter there. I'm Ben Short. Uh, I was retired as a captain, and my serial number is 604318. Great. What's your serial number? Oh, that's classified. No. <laughs> Last four, 9737. Great. And I was Air Force. Air Force. And you were? I was Navy. Navy. Um, so you were a pilot? Yes, sir. I was in Vietnam, and uh, I made a cruise in 68. And uh, then we made another one in, right at the end, 71, 72, I think, or 72, 73. Oh. I came back from Vietnam, and there was not a good feeling about Vietnam veterans. I was 21 when I got out of the service, and I buried everything that happened for many years because I knew how the public felt about it, or at least I thought I knew. And this trip, I was hoping to meet veterans and share their stories. So I was with someone who could understand what I was going through because they had gone through the same type of thing. I want peace in my heart from what happened 52 years ago. Could have taken a guy out one time because I, I know he was an NBA, but he had a bicycle and pushing a bicycle full of uh, boxes on it. 
I came around the corner with my truck. He, he dropped over and, and he dropped the bike and C4 fell out. I know what a block of C4 looks like. Yeah. And so I told the kid next to me, I said, okay, this guy has C4, let's go back and get him and we'll take him in. So we went around the corner. I said, lock and load, turned around, came back, fired back. And then this guy was, had his bike and running through the rice pad. He was running away from us. And I almost was gonna shoot him. And he said, and the kid back, he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? And I didn't do it. So that was the closest I could he be actually physically yeah, killing him. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Alpha. Bravo. Airborne. Charlie. No. Delta. No. Echo. Echo. Sergeant Larry Soper, now it's serial number 170401571, United States Marine Corps, retired. And what about you, young man? My name's Gunnery Sergeant Gary E. Soper, 170401434, United States Marine Corps, retired. When we were in the children's home, we snuck down and watched TV, which we weren't allowed to do. And, I, and it just happened to turn it on, it was a Marine Corps movie. And we, my brother and I looked at each other and said, that's what we're gonna be when we grow up. And of course, everybody told us, oh, we're too short, you're too small, you're not strong enough. But yet, here we are. Hey guys. All right, man. Good morning. I went over there as 24 years old as, as a sergeant, and I didn't get close to my men because I had to send them on patrols, different things, knowing in my own mind that they wouldn't come back. And some, at some point in time, somebody wasn't coming back. That was the hardest thing for me to do in Vietnam. I mean, everything so far is totally different. It was, what, 55 years ago when I came home? 
You know, I, mean, I was accused of being a, a baby killer and spit on and everything else. And uh, they, people my own age, you know, and I was a draftee and I just couldn't understand it. And, uh, Do you find that their accusation on a whole was false? Totally. broke up when I saw that stack of the nurse treating that GI. And I didn't date a nurse, but we went out a couple times. One of the times that we, we went out, she was at 24th Medivac Hospital in Long Bend. She took me into the receiving area. It makes the trauma center in Chicago or St. Louis on a Saturday night look like a picnic. James Kennard was a very close friend of mine. He was drafted into the Army. Within six months, he had been to Vietnam and lost his life. It's an opportunity for me to pay respect to those who, it's, it is very heartfelt, that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms today. Finding a couple of, of uh, shipmates that, that we lost during the combat cruise that went down in A6 aircraft. I found a couple of them. We lost several others. I, I couldn't think of the names, so I couldn't find them on the wall. But uh, I wanted to do what I could. My main goal on the trip was to visit the wall and see the buddies and see the people that uh, were in my unit that died. And so it was extremely hard to do. Oh, it was incredible. It was, I, uh, I choked up. Um, I'm not a crybaby, <laughs> but I was yesterday. And uh, it was very, 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 I would say cathartic in many ways. and. Uh, I, you know, I just felt blessed again that I'm here and alive and, and being a, uh, certainly being a part of this, it's just been, it's been great. Sadly, I had a lot of guys that, that were wounded and killed, uh, but I don't remember their names with the exception of two. And yes, I, I, uh, I found them and uh, it, uh, well, you visiting the wall was honor enough. Yeah, it, it, it's hard. It's hard. When I came back, I was ashamed being a Vietnam vet. First thing that happened to me was I got spit on. So I was embarrassed for many years. You know, I, I didn't, I would have never told anybody I was a Vietnam vet because it's just the way how it started when I came back. So it was probably like 35 years later, one day I was dropping my, my partner and, and uh, I started seeing all these other stickers and I'm thinking to myself, what's wrong with me? Why am I embarrassed? Why, should, why shouldn't I have a sticker on my vehicle? So the next day I went and got me a Vietnam sticker and from that point on, I, I'm proud to be a Vietnam. You know, I don't care what anybody thinks. What was the best part of the trip here? When I arrived at the airport in San Diego, and somebody actually greeted us for the first time in 50 years. That's wonderful. Yeah. It transformed me inside. I almost, I was so shocked I could hardly get off the bus. I'd never expected somebody to actually cheer a Vietnam veteran. And so after 52 years, it was worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> The pickleball champ of Purnock. 
I, my whole family was military. My dad was a Navy doctor. My husband was a Navy pilot. And we know Julie Brightwell well, who is our chairman, and she got us hooked. Great. Oh, it was amazing. That's amazing great. group of heroes. Great. Always. Great. You guys will see you soon. There we go. <laughs> Thank you much. Really Thank you. Appreciate your service. Serving of sitting here and getting first class treatment. Hopefully, you got first class treatment the whole weekend, but yeah. All right, Al, and here, look at this. Julie, what's all those tears? The crying face. <laughs> We hope that Julie is going to be our Woman of the Year here in Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I just want to show you one of the best groups we had. Great job. Thank you very much and thank you for your service. 53 flights, if you can believe that. 53 honor flights. All right, I'm going to try and do this fast, but just kind of give a, a big shout out. Wave to your friends and family. This was, it was my father, World War II veteran, got me started on this journey. I took him on his honor flight in 2008 and just kept volunteering. I, I said that I got addicted, but there have been a lot worse things to be addicted to than honor flight. So here we go. All right, one last time. Thumbs up or wheels up. All right, Tim. What I gather with our group of veterans today is the sense of patriotism. Uh, it's, it, it's pretty easy to get emotional in a group of men where you wouldn't do this ordinarily, but I've seen some tears here today that, that came pretty, uh, pretty freely, and uh, that's comforting to me. One of my guardians is, uh, is a Vietnamese son of a Vietnamese veteran. My goodness, and he reached out and he said, I want to just, I want to tell everyone who came to my country and sacrificed so that I could be free. Thank you. I'm crying again because I, I, we hadn't heard that. We'd heard thank you for your service, but not thank you for our freedom. And that makes a big difference. When I came home from Vietnam, we didn't get a whole lot of recognition. The recognition that most of us got was negative. I guess that's what I'm looking forward to. If I'm looking forward to anything, it's an actual welcome home. Oh,